Hi there. Welcome in the new Python video where I will show you how to make API calls using the request module. So what you can see here on my screen is a spider IDE. And I'm going to use this publicly available API URL to make API calls during this video. So if you want to practice as well, feel free to use it. I'm going to put the link. Uh, I'm going to put this link in the description section of the video. So you will be able to uh, copy this. All right, so before we make any API calls, uh, we need to make sure that we have our request module installed. So let me pull up uh, the terminal and I'm going to use the um, pip3 to install the request module since I have two versions of Python on my system. And I'm going to say pip install requests. And I suppose this is already installed on my machine, so yes, exactly. So it will not be installed again. Uh, so now that we have it, I'm going to minimize this and we can start uh, sending HTTP requests to this endpoint URL. So what we're going to say first, we're going to use the import statement and we're going to say import um, request module. So that's what we need to do first and next we're going to say r now let's create a variable r and we're just saying r equals and we're going to use the request module and the get method and the only argument that we're going to pass in is this url here so let me copy that and i'm going to paste it in here so what we're basically saying using the request mo uh, module and the get method make an http request and store the response in this R object. So let me run this, this very short script. And on the right side, here in the variable explorer, we should be able to see our response object. That's exactly what we uh, wanted to achieve. And the cool thing about Spider is that we can play around with our objects as they get created with our variables. So it will be super easy to inspect these objects once they get created. So for example, on the left side here, I'm, I have my script and on the right side, I'm now in our uh, interactive console. So what we can do is um, if you need a little help and don't know what uh, methods and attributes you can access on a specific object, uh, you can actually use the DR, DIR function um, on that object and this will return a back a list of uh, methods and attributes that you can actually use so let's me let me run this and we get a lot of uh, methods here don't worry about these uh, special methods here with uh, double underscores we should be probably interested in the ones below here so for example uh, we have the status code here we have the json decoder method we have the headers so to inspect uh, some of these, let's, uh, for example, run r.status underscore code. And this returns the, re the response code. And based on that, you're able to say whether your request was successful. So uh, in our case, it was successful because we got back uh, 200. Uh, let's say that we want to inspect headers as well, that we got back. From the server and there's a bunch of useful information in here like the encoding like the data format we get back and we know that this is json so um, actually before we can um, play around with this response object and extract certain information uh, about this api uh, we'll have to decode it and to do that we're going to use the json decoder so let me go back here and I'm going to add a small comment here. Make API, an API call and down below here, we're going to create another variable and we're going to say resp equals. And now we're going to use the JSON decoder on our R object. And once we run it, we should be able to see the new object. And there it, there it is. We have a list so uh, in our variable explorer we are able to see the list object and actually we can uh, inspect this uh, in more detail if we double click it 
And this is simply a list of dictionaries. So each item in our list is a dictionary. And let me close that because uh, actually we're able, we'll be able to inspect each item in the list in our interactive console. So to do that, we can, for example, say, let's um, print out the item at offset zero. And let's see what we get. So we have our fair first item in the list and we get a lot of information about each object uh, in our uh, list, like, you know, uh, name, region. We probably want to print only some of them. Uh, so, uh, but before we do that, if you wanted to access the uh, last item in our list, you could simply use the negative uh, index and the negative one index. And we can see that this is our last item in the list. So maybe out of all this information, uh, we want to extract the name, the capital, and let's say the region about each item. So I'm gonna back, I'm gonna go back here to, uh, to my script. And since this is a list, we can uh, look for this list. So we can say simply, for item in resp, uh, remember resp is our list. You can see it here as well. Uh, you can see the type. So we can say uh, for item in resp, and we're gonna use the print statement. And here we're gonna say we're gonna use f strings. Uh, so we want to print out the country name. So we can access it using the f strings double curly. Uh, brackets notation and in here we can simply access specific key of our item so this is gonna be name and actually let me copy that because we want to get some uh, we want to get other information as well so let's say we want to get region as I've mentioned and let's change this as well here and we want to get capital as well. And I'm going to change the key here as well. So that's how you can access each specific key in, uh, in our dictionary. So let's say you wanted to get the uh, name key of uh, the first item in our list. You could simply do resp uh, square brackets the first item and here you can pass in the uh, key's name. So we can see that we got the name of our first country in our list. So um, probably uh, we want to separate each item in our list from this from another one. So I'm gonna make a separator here by simply saying um, something like this. So we're gonna uh, print out 20 dashes here and let's run this and let's see what we can get out of this out of this. All right, so as you can see, we get a nicely formatted output. Uh, so we can see each item that we got back from our uh, API endpoint. And we get country, region, and capital, and capital exactly as we've defined. And maybe uh, you're wondering how you can get um, information about the country you live in. So to do that, we could use, for example, list comprehensions and we can simply do something like, I'm going to use the interactive console here and let's say item, we want to print the whole item, all the information. So in this case, we want to print the whole dictionary item uh, for item in our response object. And this is a list only if uh, our item and we want to access the name key equals to the country name you live in. So let's say I live in Poland, so I'm going to set it to Poland and I should get back the uh, dictionary containing information about Poland. So uh, that's exactly what happened. And uh, we got back a list as well. And this list contains only this one dictionary uh, with information about uh, the country I live in. So um, that's it for today. 
I encourage you to uh, use this uh, publicly available API endpoint and practice on your own. And if you have any comments or questions, let me know. And don't forget to subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching and take care. Bye bye.